Hi guys, Andy Enns, Orkin Label, with the amazing Kate Wilson. Straight over to Kate. She's going to do. Should we tell? Should we tell people, Kate, or does Liam guessing? <laughs> Liam guessing. Liam <laughs> guessing. Straight over to Kate. She's going to do maybe a few poems from this collection. Over to you, Kate. So, as I mentioned in the first part, I'll read the first poem in the collection, The Last Act of Love. And it's inspired by The Banks of the Seine, 1887. Take me with you through the gallery where selves are constructed over and over in seasons of colour, their shift and breath a breeze on my face. Your eyes are unmatched in vibrancy, taking all there is, these wearied landscapes, conjuring pictures from mosaic pieces. I'd forgotten the world could fit together this way, senses on a knife edge, fully fledged. Take me with you along ruddy trails and all, through the assault of Parisian thoroughfares where you find calm on riverbanks at twilight. Let me see the starry nights, your constellations that sing of romance through the dusk, the lamp-lit plazas which hum to the cadence of your colour, where blue is a thread which runs and runs. Let me hold you through hours where this assault is too much, where you struggle to take up your brush. Let me whisper comfort in your ear, take your face between my palms and break myself to save you. Let me crack myself open like your sparkling skies, crush hearts in swirls of stars as madness steals the last of love. Let me suffer in your stead without reward or recognition so you can paint in gold and white the veiled landscapes of your life. Stuff great, great reading that one, Kate. Great one to start this, this look of reading off. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions in this one actually. So it's always me, me showing how clever I am as a reader sometimes. But yeah, I thought it's a it's a great choice to start the collection off this one. And I found it interesting where in the second half of the poem, the last five standards are all with let me. Like it was was that a conscious decision to do the second half of the piece with that sort of repetition? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, this poem had been a lot longer to begin with, ah. um, and it's very active, and that's partly why I like to start start the collection with this because it is quite active. That take me with yeah. me. Yeah. Um, yes. Great. But yeah, no, it's not really conscious. And now you're saying it, I'm like, oh yeah, no, it is. For the last <laughs> <laughs> no, the other thing that got me with this was, and you're reading it then, and this must have been in mind on the last three stanzas where you've got the tone of it gets more and more aggressive, if that's the right word for it, where you start, with, let me whisper, let me crack and let me suffer like it was like, that must have been planned out because it's building the tension up and the piece is really beautiful there and quite upsetting as well. Yeah, I think it is that kind of, you're, you're sort of looking at his paintings and thinking about his life and, and everything that he suffered with and then, yeah it's supposed to kind of build up to that crescendo of that let me crack myself open and it, yeah it's a bit violent really but yeah but i think it works because if you want to research who he was as a person and you're right with the suffering he did in his life yeah it's really really great writing no great stuff anyway no more questions on to piece number two over to you mm -hmm. So this is one that we mentioned earlier as well, 36 self-portraits. You began in gold, ruddy with light, though you never lost the brown. You didn't want to be seen, obscured in coal, belt hat, direct stare. The picture of the artist as a somber man. Blue enters. A crusade of strokes makes your expression unreadable. There is one image where your eyes are not visible. The man with three faces, edges of eye, sideways glare. Yellow is an assault, woven like wheat fields, overflowing. Borders are sharp like your eyes, piercing as a lemon grove. You wear green for the first time jaded, taken prisoner by yourself. 
You try to capture your hunger, sunken eyes, hollow hours in pursuit of perfection. Lost in a foreground which grows and expands in sand and brown. How sometimes you drink to forget, but it's pastoral. Punched from nights of plenty, shrinking under eyes of shifting hue. Blanketed in brilliant white bandages. Vivid, relentless blue, waves and swirls which grow definitions. A shadow that follows and follows. Yeah, that is really is abstract, Alan. I've forgotten. I thought abstract art was actually great until you started reading it. But again, beautiful stuff there. Now, there's a couple of really good images. And I, I think there's a lot of good images in this piece anyway, straight away. But I did really like changing the pace of the piece on the third stanza, where the first two were obviously were you, you. Then you went to like the picture of the artist as a sombre man. I thought that's a great change in tone now. Was that intentional or did it come up naturally in your redrafting that bit of art? I think it came up naturally, but I think I did kind of, because obviously this poem is made up of lots of short stanzas, because um, I did kind of want it to be clear that, that mm. there are kind of images that should sort of stand on their own. Um, yeah, it does feel like there's lots of short and good poems themselves here. And it's great because it's abstract, but they all link together. And I think doing that's the hardest point sometimes. You're trying to piece them all together like a jigsaw, aren't you? And I can well suspect what you had you knew what the images were, is trying to get the order right, and that's probably the hardest point in the piece, I suspect. Yeah, this one definitely had a lot of editing to be done before it sort of reached its final form. Yeah, um, it shows, it shows. No, I, my, I've got to ask you, my favourite little segment was Borders are sharp like your eyes, piercing as a lemon grove. I thought Lemon Grove's fantastic image. What painting was that one from then? So I don't think that's actually from a painting. So oh. at, the, at the time of um at the time, oh, well, it will have been from a painting, but the actual phrase Lemon Grove, I'm almost certain came from some of the letters that Vincent wrote to his brother Theo. So they're a brilliant collection of letters, and what it shows you is that Van Gogh was also, I think, a bit of a poet himself, really, in the way that he was able to write, too. And I'm I'm really confident that that was something that had just stood out to me from one of his letters, and I thought, oh, I'd love to use that in a poem, and so I did. <laughs> yeah, that's no, brilliant. Absolutely, it's a great, great line. Definitely with that. So, no, it's, you know, it was a great piece anyway. Straight away, it's a great choice. Second one. Right. Let's move on. We'll be here all day otherwise. And <laughs> over to you, Kate, for your next piece. Great. Pilgrimage to Amsterdam. Sunflowers. I was an infant when I first saw them, modelling pastiche and lime pastels which smeared my skin, unforgiving. Yellow wound in circles that swallowed shape and similarity, curving irreverently. That Christmas, my grandmother gifted me yours, hoping to entice some artistry. They hang still, bleached through years of exposure to longing, reminding me of my own masterpiece, discarded in a cupboard in a family home, protected at least from wandering fingers of light. Years later, Pastel smudged to memory, I stand in Amsterdam with a camera phone, picturing them through a short lens, the intimate feel of your brush, a rush of gallery light in the escalating heat of July, this brilliant blooming behind glass. Beautiful, beautiful, again that. Hey, that one feels much more personal to you than the, 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 pre, the previous two. So that was there. I know you talk about your memories of Amsterdam itself. So, so what made you want to bring almost bring yourself into the narrative in this piece? Yeah, I mean, I think probably because the sunflowers, like we talked about earlier, mm. is the painting that sparked my sort of love of Van Gogh. So for me, that's always been a very sort of personal attachment to them. And I think it was in, I think, 2019 that I went to Amsterdam and I actually stood in the museum and 
saw them and it was a very sort of special moment for me and I just thought there was something there to say about the, my kind of history with that painting. No, brilliant. No, no, it shows, it shows your love of the piece and also the way it's impacted your life. I was like, it's a really, really decent piece. Okay, no more questions, okay? Move on to your next piece. A song on the breeze, wheat field with, with a lark. I wonder if you're the lark above exhalations of wheat cut down at its peak so wildflowers tremble at a shock of sun. Flitting through blue, sudden presence, a seldom singer calling the breeze to order. And I'm breathing at last. My sorrows a song, weaving, diving through years of scattered corn, collected and tossed in annual harvests of gathered gold, hailing with the light. Perhaps I'm the last. Oh, God. If I was sat there, I'd give you a hug after that piece. That's, that's really, really sad, that piece. Because you can, you've done a really clever trick there. I don't think a lot, a lot of writers would get it. Is that when you've done the, the first part, it's like, I wonder if you're the lark. And you put, you've come to a realization at the end piece, perhaps I'm the lark. And I think that's beautiful. Really, really beautiful with that. So that was like we said before, when it's almost like that magic moment or something where something connects in your head, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I th and I think that's one that I wrote quite early on, actually. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, maybe some of the poems I wrote to begin with maybe were a bit more about the poet being present in the poems. I'm, I mean, they, the poet obviously is present in the poems, but some of them more so than others, and this is definitely one of those. And you're right, it's very much about the experience of, you know, a realisation that you can come to through looking at the, that piece of art. Yeah, you do, and it's like, yeah, definitely, you should understand the it. So, listen, I'm not going to ask anymore. I'm going to tell people, go and get the collection. So, right, Kate, should we t t tell people how many more pieces you're going to do? Now, it's yeah. a good time, isn't it? There's two more to come, people. Yeah. Yeah. Over to Kate for piece number five. Fleeing night skies, snow-covered field with a harrow after millet. When stars were torment, you took to imitating others, taking prints and painting angles of familiar eyes, visionaries you could trust, men who knew how to construct beauty simply. You chose a snowscape in the flare of a year, battered blue that bled like crooked edges of a bruise, the merging of land with sky, as if you knew your end was coming. The sweep of black lines direct my eyes away from the land, lead me to the fringe of canvas, staccato details, wing beats like my heart as it quickens in the dark, how easy it is to lose yourself. That last line just sums it up in that full piece and beautifully because I've seen pieces like or collections that are trying to raise that full point, not told as straightforward as that one. That's why so great great stuff and again is like i didn't i wanted to spot it in this one this one's got a bit of a wintry feel in it as well really hasn't it this one so that's why it's obviously I've, i said i was saying before basically i thought the one piece that led from the police book i think this one goes that direction as well but yeah there's an i think i like this because it's again it's another understanding piece where you you show that you understand the pain he went through in it so and it's like it's and i've done bits of art before and i'm Part of my it's atrocious of it. Whereas, like, it's like you don't, you know, you can, when you get a painting, you can really lose yourself in the moment, can't you? Yeah. Like, and I think that's what you're talking about here with that one. So, I know you said before you've done bits of art yourself before, haven't you? So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably, I like this one again because it's that wintry landscape. Can you tell that winter is one of my, my favorite season, probably? So. <laughs> Yeah, again, yeah, no, it's, it's, it has to be done, that one, definitely. I can't blame you there with that, so it's wonderful stuff. Okay, let's go on to the big conclusion. Oh. Big conclusion, okay. Under baleful sun, noon, rest from work after millet. 
I'd sleep with you under baleful sun, I think. A cross stitch of straw like the weave of your hat and my hair a golden phallic. We'd rest together in soft pockets of days, held in nooks of hay that were made for us. The world would be cloudless. This quietude would reach and spread, languorous behind your eyes, until stars would sink, calm themselves against the sunrise. Until the boy who was driven half mad with thoughts, with ruddy passions that raced and fled, could lay down his head to rest. That's beautiful and harrowing, if that kind of makes sense. Because <laughs> I, and obviously I don't, I don't know what the inspiration of this piece was, but it feels like oh, you told me before, obviously, like his book, someone's like you're falling in love collection with your current your partner, but it does those first three stanzas. I like that to me of that sort of magical moment when you're in love. But then like, the, the last stanza is like it's gone a completely darker direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think it was supposed to be. A kind of poem about imagining if I was in that painting where they're sleeping under the hay bales together and just like almost a poem about wanting Van Gogh to have, have been able to like find that piece that he could never really find. So that's that's really what that one was about. But I thought it was quite a nice one to end on because it's it's quite gentle as well. I mean, I know it sounds a bit dark at the end, but... <laughs> Yeah, but it's done in a very subtle way. And I think that's what's really good about this book, Kate, where you've not gone over the top of it. And your first collection didn't either. That's why I like your work, where it's the subtleness behind it. It's, I think like, you need to reread pieces sometimes. And that's what's good about yours, where people can, you can read the book 20 or 30 times and you'll still be picking up little bits of magic in it. Now, I didn't ask you in the first half, like I normally do, and I completely forgot this is old days showing through. So first of all, then, Give us the hard sell. Where can people get hold of your collection? Um, so you can buy the collection direct from my publisher, Bosporus Press. So they're a new Oxford-based publisher. Um, they've published my pamphlet and another brilliant pamphlet um, by Paul Blakeman. Um, and I think they're about to announce some new people that they're publishing Ooh. too. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. And... Just want to say, like, really impressed with the design work they've done on the cover. I think it's beautiful. So, Ooh, yeah, nice little slim yeah. book to get. Yeah. Now, obviously, if people are wondering, obviously, they're on the audio side. You better describe to them, Kate, very quickly what's on the cover. I <laughs> no, just showing it to you on a video. But um, yeah, so it's um, there's some brilliant sort of brush strokes and sort of red, orange, and blue sort of colours that kind of reflect some of the work that's sort of contained within um and it's yeah it's just a very beautiful sort of abstract design that really suits the poem so i was yeah. absolutely thrilled when they um, sent that it, oh I, I would have been as well because it's obviously it's not van gogh they've used but they've, they've put some thought into it haven't they really so with the, the cover of it and it's the full present the full execution of it is brilliant oh well done now yeah. obviously about yourself then if people want to find out more about you where do you recommend it so, um i mean i'm um, I'm on Twitter, so at Kate J Wilson two one three, and also if you want to order a book, you can get a signed copy from me directly. If you just said, drop me a message on Twitter, so you, that's another way to get one. Um, I do have a website; it's a bit out of date though, so I don't know if it's that useful. Yeah, um, it might be time for an update when you get a chance. <laughs> and I'm also on Instagram at just one more cliche. So, oh. um, <laughs> That's not UK, definitely not one cliche. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant yeah, stuff. Yeah. Okay, slightly tongue in cheek. Rava, as they say in Manchester, right? So hang around anyway. So I do need to chat a bit more off mic anyway. But it's been a pleasure today catching up with you. Definitely, I really enjoyed this. Really, really good fun. So I'm going to use the same saying I used when I spoke to you two years ago. But you know the saying. So <laughs> anyway, guys and girls, as Don Callis over at AEW Wrestling says, stay safe. And stay over. We will see you all next time.